So if you're watching this video, you're probably well aware of just how strict and just how stringent the medical application process is in terms of grades, in terms of UCAT, in terms of work experience, in terms of volunteering. The entire process is extremely strict. And in this video, I'm gonna be telling everybody how I got in to the medical schools that I applied to with subpar grades. So it makes sense to start off by explaining where I went to school. So I went to school in Scotland, in Edinburgh, and obviously this, this is part of the Scottish education system, the SQA. The entry requirements for the Scottish system, I think are four A's and one B, or around five A's. In my fifth year of high school, which is when the grades count sort of particularly, I got one A and four B's. So as you can tell, it's nowhere near the cut of what would get into a good, so, or actually any medical school. So from this, I was absolutely gutted, as you can probably imagine, the, the sort of the last year or to be honest, the last two years when I sat my previous exams, I had been working towards this sort of dream place in the medical school. Just with my grades, they obviously just would not cut it. So I didn't even go and sit the UCAT in school. So I was absolutely gutted from this. And maybe about after a week or two of just honestly processing the emotions of not getting in straight away, I was looking for other options as I was still determined to get into it, as I can imagine many of you people will as well. So from this, one of the best options that I found appealing to me the most was doing another degree. So this works differently for every medical school, but majority of medical schools take people that do sort of a biology related degree. For example, biomedical science, medical science, infectious diseases, biological sciences, and some medical schools actually take any degree. So they can take things like arts, history, sort of English, it will be important if you have a particular school in mind to look into obviously their entry requirements. So what I did from this is I did a four year degree in Scotland covered totally by student loans. So it was totally in debt free. And I did this in biological science, which was specializing in sort of human health and disease. This took me four years, which obviously has now got me to age 22. And now I'm reapplying to medical school. So the way it works with medical schools now in terms of grades is you need a two one. So if you're not sort of familiar with the university grading process. It's quite similar to high school grading processes. Um, you can get a third. A third degree is the equivalent to around 50%. So that wouldn't make the cut for medicine. You can get a 2-2, which is I think 50 to 59%. You can get a 2-1, which does make the cut for medicine, which is 60% to 69%. Or you can get a first, which is 70% and above. So essentially, medical schools are taking students that have 60 to 100%. They've basically got to be RNA. It does sound quite easy. I'm sure a lot of the people that are sitting sort of exams in school think, oh, a B is relatively easy to make, but it is important to mind. You have to average a B minimum over the last two years of school, but it's perfectly doable. I've done it myself and so many other students do it as well. I have no idea how I managed to miss this because it's actually the only main point in this video but the degree classification that I got was a first which obviously gave me the conditions to get into uni which I was very happy with. So in my degree at Harriet Watt it was four years essentially the first two years were pretty general biology and as it became to third and fourth year it was more sort of specialised as I said towards health and disease. So I did my dissertation in fourth year and it was pretty much responsible for a large chunk of my grade. I did it on essentially a research proposal for Parkinson's disease and combining things called acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, which is a drug quite commonly prescribed for people with Alzheimer's and it's basically to do with the dopamine. And I thought about combining these with human-induced pluripotent stem cells. So you've probably covered stem cells in school if you've studied biology, which I assume you will be if you're watching this video. Um, you can get stem cells which are pluripotent. They come from an embryo. It obviously comes with ethical issues. So one way you can avoid this is by essentially taking something like bone marrow or blood from an adult human, altering the genes and reverting it back to sort of a pluripotent stem cell and then deriving it into brain dopaminogenic neurons. That's essentially what I did my dissertation on. You can either sit the UCAT or the GAMSAT or you can sit them both. The GAMSAT is valid for two years. The UCAT is valid for the year of application. So I sat the GAMSAT last year or sorry, two years ago now, and I sat the UCAT last year. The GAMSAT is so, sort of for particular graduate unis. Um, no undergraduate uni take them in the UK. So for me, it was St Andrews that I applied to, which is a Scottish graduate entry medicine course. It's called Scott Gem, if any of you are Scottish and interested in looking at it. I sat the UCAT, 
to get into sort of the undergraduate uni degrees just the same way that you would out of high school. So I applied to then Edinburgh and Glasgow. So, so far that's me applied to all three unis that I chose and realistically the only ones I would want to go to, which were Edinburgh, Glasgow and St Andrews. And I was really happy with those three choices. So in the UK, I ended up getting 2,830 as my total score and I got a situational judgment as a band two. I think the entry requirements for some unis cut off maybe band threes and fours or maybe fours. Again, it is important to look at your unis entry requirements. So with this score, I was relatively confident about getting an interview for Edinburgh and Glasgow. My GAMSAT score, if any of you are aware of it, was I think around 60, and which isn't amazing, but it did actually manage to score me an interview as well. So, so far what I've done is I've applied three places and I've got three interviews as well. Personal statement, managed to get it sent away, references sent away, and around December time, I think it was, I heard back off my interviews. So all three universities had very different styles of interviews. Um, I'll cover these sort of more towards the time that you guys will be sitting interviews around December, January, February time. Um, and the experiences with the interviews overall were actually really nice. Um, I think maybe the St Andrews Uni I found to be the most difficult and Edinburgh the easiest. But overall they were as to be expected as a medical school interview. And then sort of a few months after, I think around February time, I started hearing back and I got a initially an offer to Edinburgh Uni. They gave me a conditional then I got an offer from Glasgow Uni and they also gave me a conditional. I think I was on the waiting list for St Andrews or something, but I had to withdraw it because I was very keen on one particular uni. So in order to confirm one of my choices, I had to withdraw from St Andrews and I got a conditional offer for both Edinburgh and Glasgow at the conditions of meeting a 2-1. The uni I chose was the University of Glasgow. I think there's a few reasons for this, I can go into it maybe in a different video, but the main reason for this essentially was they have a very heavy reliance on communication skills, which I think is really important when you're a doctor, obviously I think you can know as much information about things as you'd like, but you're speaking to another person, so the information is best sort of communicated by somebody who's done a lot of communication skills in uni, and this is done through Glasgow. They also have full body dissection from first year. So I'll go on again in future videos about sort of the differences between prosection and dissection and how you can sort of approach these things in interview style questions. But that was one of the reasons why I chose Glasgow. So I'm starting Glasgow in September. Um, I've got sort of a few months off of freedom where I'm just trying to totally relax before medical school starts and then I'll be moving to Glasgow. I'm really looking forward to starting at Glasgow in September and I plan on documenting the process because to be honest there isn't actually much coverage of Scottish medical schools on YouTube so I think why not fill that gap myself and I'll be doing that. So if you have any questions about the medical school application or anything you'd like me to cover in general just put it in the comments below. Um, I will be covering more UCAT stuff because I'm aware the UCAT sort of sittings are just starting about now I think and people will probably be focusing on the UCAT more than anything else just now. But yeah I thought it would be a quick insight into myself and how I managed to approach medicine throughout the non-conventional routes and yeah thank you for watching and I will be making UCAT videos again shortly.